Hello everyone and thanks for visiting Bluebeam Back to Basics. Today we'll be talking about custom columns. For those of you I have not met personally, you can reach me at that phone number and email address and we encourage you to visit our website where you can learn all about our Bluebeam training program. Custom columns allow you to start putting in information, what the industry refers to as data, and then managing that information and sharing it with others. So how do you get started? I'm going to create an empty PDF file and I'll open the markups list. Now this is a pretty typical profile and the columns that are displayed are delivered available standard columns. If I want to create a series of columns for information that is important to me, I need to create custom columns. You do that under the markups list by going to this area here and choosing columns. This is where you control the delivered columns, but if you want custom columns you have to go to the very bottom and choose manage columns. To get to custom columns you have to go to that second tab. Now this can only be done when you're working locally. This cannot be done if you're actively in a studio session. From here you would choose to either import a custom column setup that you created and saved or received from someone else or you would use the add button and create your own. I'm going to choose add and this is one of the first decisions you have to make is what information are you tracking and what format is it in. The default here is text. That would allow me to have an empty column with an empty field that I would be able to double click on and simply type in whatever I want. In its current setup, it would be a single line of text with no default value, but I could turn it into a multi-line, or I could establish a default value of sample, and every time I double-clicked, that would be the first suggested word to put into that particular column. Other alternative formats are numeric columns, where you can keep track of a number, how many decimal places, and whether or not there are minimum, maximum, and default values for that as well. Under the format there, you can change it between normal numeric, currency, or percentage. Another format type would be date, and you can see here the various types of displays of dates. You can choose choice, and we're going to come back to this one because this is where you build a pick list of options to choose from. You could choose check mark, and check mark is simply a column that you decide to either check or uncheck indicating something about the particular object that you're working with. Formula allows you to create mathematical expressions to take the information stored in one column combined with information in other columns to create a result. And this is where you would do something like the cost of the flooring for this room is based on the area square footage times the type of flooring and the dollar value associated with that type of flooring. You could go further and you could say that a per square foot labor rate to do that carpet installation is X amount of dollars and then you could put in another column that said okay the, the realized cost is the cost of the carpet plus the labor therefore getting the total cost of the carpet. So I'm going to go back to choice and here this one's a little bit different than all the others. Here you enter your list of selectable options. So now I would go in here and put in the item and the subject and choose whether or not to assign it a numerical value. So we'll use that example of carpet that I just mentioned as a sample. So here I would put in maybe carpet as the subject and the item would be inexpensive carpet. An inexpensive carpet is going to cost $1.25 per square foot. Then I'll add another value in here and we'll also call it carpet and we'll put reasonable and we'll say that the dollar value for that is three dollars a square foot and lastly we'll put in carpet and we'll say expensive carpet is going to be in the range of ten dollars a square foot so now we have a choice column with these labels 
with these numeric values associated with them. But we haven't named it yet, so we do need to name this custom column, and I'm going to call it carpet type. And hit OK. Now, we have one custom column, which is called a choice. And all that's going to do is select the type and the dollar value associated with it. So if we do want to have a column that has the mathematical formula that says what is the area times that, we need to have another column called a formula column. So I'm going to add one more. I'll choose the type of formula and I'll put in the expression. As soon as I start typing into this area, I'll type in the letter A, it pops down a list of available variables for your expression. And I'm going to put my formula in here to say that the cost of the carpet is the area, I'll select area, times, and then I'll start typing again, and I'll choose carpet type. Remember the carpet type has a dollar value associated with it. So I've got the area times the cost gives me the cost of the carpet. I do want it to be currency based, and I want it at two decimal points, and the rest of that is fine. So oh, I have to give it a name, so I'll call that carpet cost, and I'll save that. So I have two custom columns that as soon as I hit the OK button are going to be displayed in my markup list. But you've now reached an important crossroad that you have to think about and decide what you're going to do. If I proceed and save these columns by hitting the OK button, they only will exist in this one document, this one PDF file. They won't be in any other PDF files. They won't be automatically created. When I create new PDF files, they will exclusively be in this one PDF file. If that's what you want, hit OK and you're done. If you want to make these two custom columns part of your profile so that they are remembered and every file that you create from this point forward using that profile would automatically have those created and available, you would want to save these custom columns to your profile and then hit OK. That way this file will get those custom columns as will any new files, again, created using that profile. But what if you want them in this file and you want to share them or maybe use them in the future on other files, just not every file? Well, then you don't need to save it to your profile. What you can do is export it, save it as a custom column template, and then whenever you need it, import it later on for a specific file, which is what I'm going to do. I probably have 10 or 15 different custom column templates that I'm going to be pulling from as we go through this video. And that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to hit OK to put it into this one file. OK, so now we have a value and we have a mathematical formula associated with that value, but we don't have any markups to work with. So let's create a markup. If we're going to do any type of mathematical calculation that involves lengths, or areas or volumes, we have to have a calibrated document. And you can see right here, my new file doesn't have that. So I'm going to set scale, and I'm going to choose a standard scale of an eighth of an inch equals a foot. Now I can do some accurate measuring and create area measurements that I need for this area carpet. So if I come over here now and I say I want an area measurement from here to here, it tells me that that's 299.89 square feet. It doesn't know it's carpet. It doesn't know anything about that at all. It just knows it's an area measurement. If I wanted other project participants to know that this is a markup representing measured carpet, then I would put in here carpet. But you can see here it's calculated my area, but none of the other information has been filled in. That's because none of it's been actually selected yet. In order to activate these custom columns, I'll have to double click in the column it itself and assign it one of my selectable values. Is this inexpensive, reasonably priced, or expensive carpet in this particular room? I'll say inexpensive. Because I chose inexpensive and because it's already been assigned a dollar value of $1.25 per square foot, it has already taken the area multiplied by that dollar value to calculate the carpet cost. Now, if I do pretty much the same thing, I draw another area here and I get roughly the same size. All right, I'll get it close to 300, right around there. 
Now that also comes in and it knows that it is carpet and because I was still in the action of placing an area measurement, it detected or it assumed I wanted inexpensive as the value there. If I change that by double clicking on it and saying that, well, this is reasonably priced carpet, you can see now to where the mathematical calculation is now updated using the dollar value associated with reasonable instead of inexpensive. You can also see how my values are currently being sorted by carpet type. But if I go to subject and I group them together, you can see now how they still have a carpet type label and assignment and a dollar value assignment, but because they're grouped together now, we're getting them combined with a total at the top. So what you see in your markup list depends on many different variables including what you're currently sorting your data by. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples for different industries of using custom columns that have been established with this very process. Some are a little more sophisticated than others, but ultimately you go through these same steps in order to create and define and maintain your columns and then just provide the information that's necessary. So let's grab a more realistic version of this carpet example and then we'll move to a roadway example. I'm going to kill this document completely without saving and I'm going to create a brand new document. So what I'll do is I'll use one of the sample files delivered from Bluebeam. If I go to help and I go to welcome to review, there's a button right here that says open a sample file and I'll open that sample file. Now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is zoom into this area up here and I'm going to place some carpet in these two rooms. But I'm going to update my custom columns by importing a custom column definition that I saved previously. Now remember, this is a brand new file and when I go into custom columns, all of that work is lost because I didn't save the file. I didn't export the custom column definition and I didn't save it to the profile. I had three chances to save that and I chose not to do any of them. So that is completely gone. So that's an important decision you make as you're creating custom columns is do you save it to the profile, do you export it, or do you just want to keep it in that, uh, in that one file. So here I'm going to import a custom column that I've created previously. So I'll hit import. I've got a folder where I keep custom columns and I'll go to custom columns and there's a list of the ones I want and I will simply choose flooring type and you can see here it's pretty much what I did before there's a flooring type now this is shag Berber on a 45 degree angle 9 by 9 or concrete and each of those has a different subject and each of those has a different dollar value assigned with it and when I go to cost, there's a formula that again says area times the flooring type gives you the cost. But here's a little trick that you should know about is when you have a custom column with these choice values in here, if you make the subject and the item labels match symbols in your tool sets, when you use those markups from that tool set with the matching name, it should automatically detect that and do all of the associations for you as you're placing the item. So let's give that a try. Now I'm going to go to my tool sets and I've got one called interiors that has these flooring types saved with both a subject and a label that matches my custom column item labels. So I've got carpet shag, I've got carpet berber, tile on a 45, tile 9 by 9 and concrete. So if I come in here and choose carpet shag and I place a rough shape from say here to here, not only did it place an area measurement, it automatically defined it under flooring type as shag carpet with a $1 per square foot price times the area and calculated $101 as the flooring cost. If I change that and say that this is Berber carpet and select the room next door and do another rough shape from say here to here, 
now it's detected that that markup is not just a markup it's not just an area measurement it is a markup representing carpet specifically Berber carpet specifically with a two dollar value and then multiplying the formula of area times the cost coming up with the extended cost for the flooring I'm going to create another file this will happen to be a roadway file to save time with the video I'm just going to show you the end result of the markups that I placed using this tool set because it worked exactly the way it worked with the carpet example I showed before when I placed the reflector items along the center line of the road it knows that I placed nine of those with a dollar value of five dollars each and it calculated that information when I placed the two speed limit signs it calculated that there were two of those at forty dollars apiece and figured out the cost there when I placed guardrails and concrete curbing along the edge of the road it automatically detected whether it was curbing or whether it was a guardrail assigned it the appropriate dollar value from the custom column and determined that this is a length calculation instead of a count calculation and then multiplied the length times the value to come up with the linear cost for that particular item but using custom columns to calculate cost based on that type of formula is not the only purpose for custom columns. You can also use it to do data analytics. And I'm going to show you a very simple example of that. So here I've opened up a file that has a completely different use for custom columns. What I have here is for each colored shape, that's an area calculation representing the state boundary. If I then go inside of the smaller shape, the little gray shape there, that's representing the county and then the little blue dot represents the city and then each city has been assigned a population value as just simply part of the data relevant to that particular markup and that's the beauty of custom columns is you can use them for anything so here I've placed a bunch of markups and those markups have data now I can use that markup data to help me do whatever activities I need to perform and what I need to know is I need to know within these four identified states I need to know every city that has a population that is above 600,000 but below 2 million and that is simply a filtering capability combined with my custom columns so I'll come in here and say that I want to filter the data based on population and I'll click right at the top of there and I'll say that I could choose a specific value or I could go down to custom and tell it that I want all of the populations that are greater than or equal to 600,000 and are less than or equal to 2 million and when I apply that it will use the data that I put into my custom column for population and filter out everything except the cities that meet my search criteria. Everything else is still there, it's just grayed out. But we can see now that Oklahoma City there and El Paso, in my example, are the only two cities within this model that meet the data in order to find this information and make some sort of decision based on what my job function is at my company. That's it, I hope you find this video helpful and you'll review the other videos available as well.